Okay, sweet. Let's uh, let's get into it. So the purpose of this video series, which should be a three-part video series, is basically just to share my my workflow that I've developed over these couple months I've been using Substance Designer. Just to um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's the best workflow, but it's what works for me, and I'm quite happy with the end result for this project I had here. So I mean, just um, show my methods and techniques of getting things. But you know, the thing with Substance Designer is this. Because it's like a node network, and there's so many different combinations, it's a constant learning process of how to just optimize your workflow and just get everything streamlined. So, I mean, I'm still definitely not a professional at this software, but it's more fun to me than anything at the moment. I'm just having an immense amount of fun just, you know, making a new project and just getting into it and just throwing nodes in and seeing what comes out. It's, yeah, it's been really great. So yeah, that's sort of the purpose of this video, and um, as you can see, it's like a sort of a tribute to Battlestar Galactica, which was one of my favorite series. Um, I saw this when I was re-watching re it, and I was like, damn, this actually might come out really nicely in Substance Designer. It's got interesting shapes, and yeah, like a lot can go into this in terms of learning, because first we're going to start with the custom shapes, which is the circles and the blocks, and then using the grayscale workflow that I've seen lots of guys use, it's very efficient you know you start everything grayscale you add your grunge your damage your scratches and then from there we'll take that that grayscale and basically just colorize on top of it which um worked pretty well as you can see by the the screenshots up there which was actually done in mama set maybe i can make a separate video on that some other day but today we'll just be focusing on the substance aspect of it all right so let's have a look at the maps we're going to be baking well, not baking, but rather creating. We would bake them if we take them into something like Unreal or Unity or something. So we're first going to have our base color map, which is, of course, just an RGB thing, which is going to give our all of our color information our roughness, which will control the where the light is going to interact and reflect off of the object. And then our normal map, which is going to give small, subtle height details, such as um, the grunge, the scratches, stuff like that. And then the bigger objects like the circles and the shapes and all that will be covered by the height map. So bigger objects, height map, smaller objects, normal map. And then finally the AO map, which is the ambient occlusion map, which is basically just going to give us some artificial shading on some of the crevices and everything. And overall it's almost, you can use it as like a sharpen, because it's going to take all those little crevices and, you know, holes and everything, and this is going to add a shadow, but... While doing that, it's going to just bring it out a little bit more and just make it a bit sharper. So that's more or less what we're going to be using it for. Um, but yeah, it's very adjustable. You can do actually a lot of things with your ambient occlusion map. So I think that just about covers it for the introduction part of this. Um, if anybody's interested, I hope to see you in the next two videos, which will be coming out straight after this one. So yeah, if you're there, I will see you there. Alright, cool. So here we are in a new um, window of Substance Designer. So we can just close out this welcome message and go File, New Substance. So before we begin, I actually recorded this last night. Um, and it went well. We got through the material creation and everything. And then I was lying in bed <laughs> thinking, okay, cool. That's done. I'm happy with that. Busy watching a movie. And I suddenly realized that I only recorded the audio not the video. So that kind of sucked. So this is our, well, at least my second time going at this, so. And the video is recording this time, so let's see if we can, let's see if we can do this thing. Okay, graph name. For this graph, I'm going to keep it as new graph. For our templates, I'm going to pick metallic roughness. Um, for the most part, the nodes we're going to be using will translate both into physically and, I mean, into spec and metallic, with the only difference being the output. So, Specular glossiness is just another method of PBR, but it's really personal preference. I think some engines, like Unreal Engine, do it does prefer metallic roughness, but using your specular glossiness output, you can always um, there's always workarounds and stuff like that. But yeah, these are your two options, just basically personal preference. I've been using metallic roughness since I started, so I'm going to keep with that. And then size mode will be absolute. Width for 2K, that's plenty to work with what we're going to be doing today. Uh, 4K could slow your machine down quite a lot. 
format relative to parents, this just basically means any node you plug into your first node is going to take on the resolution of that node. So that's perfect for us because we're pretty much going to stay in 2K, so I'm not too worried about that. Cool, then once we're happy with all of this, we can go ahead and hit OK. Alright, so straight off the bat, you're going to notice, and this is very deja vu because I've done this before, but <laughs> straight off the bat you're going to notice my UI is a bit different from what comes stock. So I think basically the only thing I've changed is the location of my 2D view right here, and then my 3D view over here. And if you want to do that, the reason why I prefer this is just, I actually never know why, it's just I like working with my nodes at the bottom. So if you want to do this, you just click and drag on the window and you can position it to wherever you want. And if you lose a window, well then you're screwed. No, actually then you just go to Windows, and you can select, you can activate Windows here, or deactivate them. But, uh, yeah. Alright, uh, another thing I should mention before we begin. I'm not necessarily going to go into, like, extreme beginner style stuff. You know, if you want to follow along with this, I do expect you to already understand the basic way of, you know, how a node network is actually going to function. Like, if I throw in a blend node real quick here, you know, you must know this is the background, this is your foreground. Anything you put into the background, actually anything, you're gonna, anything you put into the foreground is going to affect the background in one of the corresponding blend mode ways. So we have copy, add, subtract, multiply, add, sub, max, min, switch, overlay, blah, 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 all that stuff. You must just generally understand like, what each of this does. And working in grayscale, having the correct inputs is going to be important. I mean to understand, but we'll still play around with these. Like sometimes if you're not happy with your results, you can click on this and just scroll through it like this and just see whichever node looks the best. You know, it's sort of like working in I don't know if you've done like a Photoshop stuff. You know, you just it's basically a feel thing, it's not so much a um not necessarily a feel thing, but you know, just how it looks, you know. But uh yeah, anyway. And what I did there to get the blend mode, if you notice here you have all these drop down windows and this is basically your all of your nodes here are um, split into what they are, so filters, we have all of our filters here. But generally if you know what you want, it's a lot quicker to hit spacebar and then just search what you want. So blend mode or 2D transform or gradient or grayscale conversion if I can spell. Uh, so yeah, I think with all of that said, I think it's time to get straight into it. I'm going to be using a reference that I have from my old project, and I'll quickly throw this up on screen so you can see it. I'll be using this reference to create it basically just as a scale reference, and eventually we'll use it as a color reference and stuff, but for now, excuse me, this is just going to be on our second monitor, or well, my second monitor, just to use it as a scale reference. Okay, so first thing what we're going to do is create these rings you can see here. So we have this outer ring over here, which is going to be ring 1, ring 2, ring 3, and then a circle in the middle. And I must just say, um, at first this is going to be a bit tedious and maybe not so fun as creating you know, your grayscale stuff. And that's really what I enjoy the most, is you know working in grayscale where you don't have to worry about custom shapes, because this first part is going to be a bit tedious, but let's just stick through it and we'll come out on top. Okay, the spacebar, let's go ahead and throw in our first node, which will be a shape node. In this shape node, in our pattern options, we have a bunch of different options here. And for this, the best the thing that's going to work the best is a disk mode. So with our disk mode, we want to change the scale of this, just so it's not actually touching the border of our image. When it touches the border of our image, there's a couple of things that can go wrong later on in your project, which I think we'll get to later, but for now, let's just throw this bad boy down. Maybe let's just slide this down somewhere around there, so like 0 0.9. I think that looks pretty good for now. And I'm going to try to keep this as neat as possible, which usually doesn't go down so well for me. I'm not generally a neat person, especially when it comes to nodes, but for the sake of like a little bit of like a professional vibe, because it's a video and everything, let's just try to keep it neat. So with our first, with our first shape node here, we're going to select it so it activates it. And then we're going to throw in a blend node, and that's going to connect it automatically into the uh, background for us, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Second node we're going to add, we'll just duplicate this shape node with Control, uh, yeah, Control D, and duplicate it one more time. Then just align these and make it a bit neat. So we'll throw those in there, 
Let's add another blend node. We're going to get ready to blend these two shape nodes together in order to subtract it. You subtract the smaller one from the larger one to create. Basically, this is going to be just black, and we only want this ring here to be white, and this will be black. So we're going to take a smaller ring, which is going to be the perimeter of this edge over here, and subtract it from this circle over here. So you'll see how that's going to work in a second. So let's throw this into the foreground and this into the background. Actually, let's swap this. I generally like working this way. So let's subtract the bottom one from the top one, but in our node network, it's actually going to be switched around. If you don't like that, you can always just rotate these, but I just like having my... It makes more sense to me like this, I'm not sure. Okay, and over here we'll also have this blending node on subtract, because we're going to be subtracting white from white, which is going to subtract the white from the white and make it black. But we'll see all of that in action in a second. So both these nodes we want to set to subtract. Nothing's going to happen at the moment, because we're subtracting two of the same shape, the same size nodes from each other, which is basically... You know, uh, nothing, because they occupy the same space. Okay, so for our larger node, we actually want this one to be just a little bit smaller than our outline, because I don't want this necessarily to be a... Well, of course it's going to be a gap, but I want it to be more like a an indent or like a crevice, instead of like a big open space like, like these down here. And I hope I'm not going too fast, but anyway. So we're just going to drag this down like the tiniest amount, so let's actually input our own value here and do 0 0.89 and then with our bottom node over here we'll drag this down to like 0 0.8 for now and then view our end result so you can see this is sort of what I was talking about and a good thing to know and it's something I'm going to be using continuously throughout this video if you double click on a node it's going to show up in your 2D, in your 2D uh, preview All right? But while that's happening, you can actually select another node and then change the parameters while seeing the output from the node you previously selected, which makes things a lot easier, you know, so you don't have to keep swapping between nodes or whatever. Okay, so this looks pretty good, but now I want to see it once we compare it with this node, once we blend these two. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab the output of this shape we just made and plug it into the top, and this is going to be a subtract, so it's going to work the exact same way. We're subtracting the white away, leaving us with black. And that's this black circle we can see over here. Okay, so this edge over here is a bit too strong. So actually what I want to do is adjust our larger shape over here to like 0 0.895 maybe. Double click there to see what we got. That might be a little bit too big, but we can always change that later. So let's keep that like that for now, and then just proceed with the rest. So looking at our reference, we want this to be just a little bit thicker. So we're going to take our smaller circle and just throw this down to like 0 0.75. Check the results of that. Mm, maybe that's a bit too much. 7, 8, too little. 6, actually 0 0.76 looks alright. Let's keep that for now. And then what we want to do is basically repeat this exact same process another two more times to get those uh, these two circles over here. So let's grab all of these bad boys, Control D to duplicate them, position them in line with these ones, just keep it a little bit neat. Neat is the goal. Throw in another blend node. I know my keyboard is super loud, I'm sorry about that. And then this we can already set to subtract, and this we can already set to subtract. That is subtract because we actually duplicated from here. Okay, so same thing, let's drop this all the way down to something like 0 0.6 and this 0 0.5 just so we can start previewing it before we start adjusting it. And that looks actually kind of close, I mean for the larger circle, maybe just a bit smaller, let's try 0 0.5. And that's the same as this one, so we're not going to have any output. Let's change this to 0 0.4. Okay, now that's too big, so actually 0 0.5 was too low, so let's try 0 0.55. That looks a bit better, but too big, 0 0.535. That was a very exact value, I don't know why I did that. But, um, that's looking okay, I think. Like I said, this is going to be tedious, just trying to match this with this. Well, it doesn't have to be an exact match, but just for the sake of, you know, delivering what I promised in the intro. Okay, so now we're going to take our smaller circle here and change this to 0 0.3. 
three, five. It's looking cool, I think. Do the same thing, let's get working on our other circle just so we have something a more relative scale, just so we can you know, if, um, adjust something with everything in scene at least. The same thing, another node, set this to subtract. Drop this circle just below our other circle. So other circle is 0 0.35, let's make this one 0 0.3. And let's make this one 0 0.25. Okay, and that is too far. Let's increase this until it's just like an, a little bit away from there. That looks pretty Gucci. And then drop this one down a bit to make room for our circle. So that looks pretty good, but it doesn't feel quite right. So let's think. First of all, I want these to be the same, you know, um, thickness relative to the size, of course, but at the same time, I don't want to remove too much space over here. Let's go back to our large circle on the outside and increase this, or actually decrease it, just an, a little bit. Okay, so 0 0.52 looks kind of cool. I think we can work with this. And then while we're here, I also want to just change this out of the ring over here. Let's go back to this node and change this to oh, no, that wasn't what I wanted. Wait, I've gone and confused myself. What is this node? This is our larger node that we're subtracting this from. So this is 0 0.76, want this one to be 0 0.8. Help if I was viewing this actually. Yeah, so I made mean, it just a small mistake there. Let's just increase this by a tad. Let's try 0 0.86. No, no, that didn't work. 0 0.95. Okay, now we're going the wrong direction. Okay, so I want this circle to be a bit smaller. So oh, come on. I hate it when it does that. You want to reset your value to wherever you click and you actually want to input the value. So it was 0 0.86. Eight nine then want to be a little bit bigger so let's do zero point eight nine five and that actually looks quite good. And second thought let's actually increase this one over here as well. Let's go to that circle and then just decrease the size to like zero point three zero point three five. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, I'm happy with that. Yeah, so our last shape we're going to add onto this circle at least is going to be that circle which we don't actually need any of this. We just need one shape node. Throw another blend node. Also, let's go ahead and set this to subtract. I promise things are going to get a lot more interesting once you start working in grayscale. And then just drop this size down. Just until we have the same gap over here. Somewhere around there, a bit bigger, so let's do 0 0.165, 0 0.1655, that was extremely minute, 0 0.167, that looks quite cool, I think I'm happy with that one. Now on second thought, maybe this is a bit too big, this gap over here, but I think I'm right, I am right. So let's go grab this circle here and just increase this a little. Yeah, that looks pretty good. But now, trying to keep this the same thickness as this, let's decrease this one a bit. They're just about there, perhaps. Then increase our outer circle over here. That actually looks pretty damn good. Yeah, I like that. We can actually just um, adjust this bar here to match this one, but for now, I don't want to waste too much time on that. Let's just leave that like that. As long as I give you the basic idea of, you know, how to do something, I'm quite happy. Because then, like Substance Designer, you can spend absolute hours just trying to figure out and just getting your right sizes and everything, so. Okay, so let's keep a little bit of organization here. So I'm going to select all of these nodes, and then spacebar, and then inside, just look for our frame. And with our frame, we'll just drag this out a bit. Just so anything we create 
all the pattern we can keep inside this block and it looks neat. We'll just name this block pattern. Okay, so for our next shape, you thought this was the tedious part. Now this is going to be the tedious part. Well, even more tedious. We're going to have to create these legs over here. I don't know what to call these, so I'm just going to say legs. Or just like, um, I don't know, legs. Let's create these legs. Essentially what we're going to be doing, and if there's a better way of doing this, somebody let me know, because, I don't know, it would be really nice if you could add a shape and then, or a polygon, and then adjust each of the vertices for the polygon to wherever you want them. But as far as I know, there's no way of doing that. What we'll be doing is creating one block that runs across like this, and then just subtracting from that block with other blocks in order to get the shape. And then adding another block over here to get this uh, angle here. And the same thing with a smaller block. Okay, so before we do that, what I want is a good way of visualizing it on top of our 2D view. You know, so we can see everything as one. So let's do that. Let's add another blend node. We're going to plug the output of our circles into the background. And then... The node we're going to be using, and let's just think forward a bit. We're going to want to adjust these separate from our legs later. So let's add a blend node. And let's put this out to one side and put this in the foreground so that this blend node is actually doing nothing to this node rather than just um, being like an extension. Just so we know that this is the output from the circle. Alright, I think that looks good. Okay, so in order to create the spiral effect of these arms, you know, uh, 14 of these arms, um, this is spiraling around our circle, we're going to be using a node called the splatter circular. And you notice we're going to have two options, uh, splatter circular and splatter circular color. only difference is this one's color, this one's grayscale. We'll be using grayscale. Is it working in grayscale, of course? And I had this node selected when I added that one, that's why I threw in this connection here, which we can just delete. Alright, so let's throw this on top of our, um, our circles over there. And this operation, we're going to want to be adding black value to the white. And that's going to be an add function. Let's go ahead and already change our blending mode to add. And if I'm wrong, we'll correct it later, but I don't think I'm wrong about that. And let's just make this a bit neater. Throw that over there for now. Okay, let's uh, do this. Let's add another shape node. With this shape node, we'll try to keep it the same distance as this one. Just for neatness. And this we're going to keep as a square. But we want the scale to be something about 0 0.25. The reason why I picked... Yeah, actually 0 0.2 even. The reason why I'm picking something that's so small, and I'll get to that later, but basically in a nutshell, when we use our spiral circular node, we can start developing issues with our shape running out of space on either side. So that's just, but you'll, I think you'll see that later if you run into that problem. Okay, so from this node, we're going to plug this directly into the pattern input of our spiral. And then we'll set the um, pattern type of our spiral to image input. And this is basically going to use whatever you've input there. And even if you wanted to, you can increase the amount of patterns in order to just add some variance, but for now, all the variance we're going to be adding on these will be in the forms of grunge and damage, so we're just going to use one pattern for now. Okay, so along with that, let's go ahead and position this to where we want it to be. Let's go into our spiral... Sp uh, what's it called again? Splatter circular. And then just throw up the radius. And it looks like I was wrong about that add node. So let's see, we want... We want white to show up on white. But that's going to be a... Oh, duh, that's exactly what I've been doing over here. That's the subtract node. So I actually was wrong about that. But that's fine. We've corrected that now. Another thing we want to do is, you know, that's how these circles are... Very, uh, these blocks are very small because of our small size over here. What we'll do about this is just increase the size amount inside of this node here. So let's go down to our options over here, and down here by size, we're going to just throw these up. I think the value that worked quite well was 0 0.5 and 0 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. And if you go and count these legs over here, we have 14 of them, if memory serves at least. So let's go back to our pattern, and then, actually it's not a pattern, I'm lying. Now where was that? We have radius, we have that, we have that, with power factor, our size scale. Where was the amount? Just somewhere. Well now, this is very unprofessional. I've lost it. Uh, rotation, color. I must be staring right at it. I know it's here. Oh, it's right here. Pattern amount. Pattern amount, we can just change this to 14. And that looks pretty good. And then also what we want to do is, we want to be able to adjust the location of this block. But actually, for now, that looks fine. Instead, let's just throw down the radius in order to get this edge here a bit closer to our circle. Let's go and grab the radius and change this to 0 0.33, 0 0.333, 0 0.332. That looks pretty good for now. This is when the tedious part is actually going to begin. Let's decrease the scale of this until it's taking up half of our empty space over here. In order to just add room for that leg we're going to add at the top here. When we do that, we want to go back down to our size and change this to zero. Well, it essentially wants it to be halved. So 0 0.25 and then 0 0.25. But too small, so let's do 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. Still a bit too small, so let's do 0 0.45, 0 0.45, and that's too big, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. That looks perfect. And then go back again to our radius and drop this down. You see, if you had foresight, unlike me, you would just make those changes and then adjust the radius afterwards. But I don't, so here we are. Right, so that looks quite cool. I wonder what's the best way of doing this from here. Yeah, let's go ahead and add our leg and then we'll take it from there. Let's just pull this up a bit, just to make things a bit more linear. Add in a blend node. Throw this blend node back to here, because we're going to be working in this area here. Let's duplicate our shape node, plug this into the top. And then this, we're going to be subtracting white on white. White on white will be this will be a um, subtract with, with what we've been doing this entire time. So for this, the node we're going to be subtracting with, it's going to be a lot easier that we don't have any um, inner size is issues. So I'm going to change this to 0 0.35 and then just make it a bit longer on the y-axis by just dropping down our x-axis a bit. So that's 0 0.5. I feel like I'm really butchering these explanations, but at least you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so in order to subtract this where we want it, we're going to, of course, have to position what we're going to subtract, which is this node at the bottom. So just throw in a 2D transform node at the bottom here. Grab this and then view our complete output while we rotate this around. Actually, I'm being stupid. I meant to actually add the leg instead of start subtracting. We can still do that, we must just change this function here to add. So it's going to add white on white, which is what we want. And then we actually want to make this a bit smaller in that case. So let's do zero, or thinner rather. Let's do 0 0.25, that looks okay for now. And go ahead and add this, this uh, angled piece. And just wherever we see fit, should be fine. So looking at our reference, we sort of want to match the angle. So something around... Around there, perhaps. Maybe a bit more. It's not this. It's about there. Alright, I think that looks okay. 
Okay, so now we'll start subtracting. So let's go ahead and duplicate these two nodes. And then add another blend node over here. And this essentially is going to be the exact same thing we're doing at the top there. So drop this into the top output, change this to subtract, view our final output. With our 2D transform selected, we will just position these to where we want it. And for this, we also want to make this a bit thicker so that we don't have this um this extra area that's going to peek out from our subtraction. Let's do 0 0.5 again and view our final output. Transform 2D and just match our reference image. So this is where it gets tedious because you just want to try to be as precise as possible. Actually, what I don't want happening is for this to affect the thing we've added over here. So rather, let's go ahead and just change these around. Let's plug that into there, change this to the add, and then change this to the subtract. Then let's see if this works out a bit better for us. Yeah, this is going to work out a bit better. Let's disconnect this node for now. So just taking the output of this and plugging this into our spiral. And then we'll try to match this angle and then add this shape on top of it. So let's just match this angle. Actually, I think we're already at just about there. When I have a look at the reference again, you can see it's over here. I think perhaps just a little bit more to the left and we should be good about there. Yeah, I think that looks all right. And then before we connect this extra angled leg here, let's throw in another subtract node. We're going to subtract a bit off the top. Let's throw those in there, this in the top, and change this to subtract. And then view our final output. And then rotate this just to about 90 degrees. Then we'll just drop this down to about where we want our second leg to be beginning. At a bit of an angle as well. So perhaps somewhere around there looks pretty good. And now we can bring in the subtract node again. I mean add node, my apologies. Let's connect that to there. This to here. Neaten this up a little more. And I'm actually going to drop this one down because I want to try to remember that this is an add and these are subtract. So let's just um, bring these out a bit from the crowd. This particular project is going to get extremely messy. And let's just position this corner to meet up with this corner here. And we also want to change. Yeah, and actually this should be higher, so let's grab this and pull it up. Right there, that looks good. Then bring this to match these two corners over here. Actually, I want this to be a bit more rotated. Something about there. Okay, how does that look? That looks pretty decent. The only thing I would still want to change is making this node here a little bit shorter. Perhaps something around there. Let's grab this leg and readjust these. And then make this thinner. Instead of 0 0.25, let's do 0 0.2. That looks okay. Align these again. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. I mean, it's not exactly like our reference, but at the same time, 
in order to get it exactly like I reference, all we need to do is put in, you know, a bit more time. There is some stuff I would like to change a little bit more. Perhaps if we make this block a bit shorter. Actually, yes, that's going to do wonders. Let's pull that down to about 0 0.7. And then we're going to add another slant over here. Yeah, that is doing wonders for us. We're going to add another addition over here. So add node blend function. Add, plug this into the top. Let's adjust this to where we want it to be. Let's view the output. Select this over here. Drag this along here. And want this to be a lot smaller. So let's just go back to our shape and adjust this to about 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 as well. Maybe 0 0.35. Yeah, that should do the trick. Actually, it's 0 0.2. No, 0 0.3 should work. Let's just um, grab the 2D transform for this. Then give us that angle we wanted. And that's actually looking pretty damn good. So if this works out well for us, we should be able to just call it quits over here. Match up these corners as good as we can. In the end, we're just going to blow all of these edges a bit, so it doesn't need to be exact, but you know, the better, the closer the better. Okay, so there's a couple things I don't like about this, but for the sake of the video, I think it's okay. Like in my reference, these legs here are a bit longer, so these are a bit shorter, but I'm just going to um, work on this for now because it's not going to change too much. Um, if you want to get these a bit longer, of course, you just spend more time on these shapes. Okay, but for now, I think that's pretty good. Okay, and then we want to add these shapes over here, just these blocks. So let's pull down our frame node and then do the same thing from the beginning. Let's add a shape node. And then from our shape node, we'll do the same thing, scale 0 0.25. Duplicate this spiral node. I'm just going to kill this a spiral node because in my mind it's a spiral node. But that's not actually what it's called. Plug this into the top input which has the parameters of this one, so everything should be aligned already. Then let's start viewing these as one. So, actually what I'm going to do here is disconnect this, and then connect these to each other, and then connect this node to here, because essentially I want this to be a separate, you know, a separate um, output, and this to be a separate output, because we're going to treat both of these differently once we get to the grayscale part. Well, technically, we are working grayscale. Actually, technically, we're working height at the moment. Grayscale is more grayscale, not just white and black. But yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. This is going to be... Wait, um, I was down here, wasn't I? If you make a mistake like this and you plug a node into the wrong input, you can just hold shift and then drag it back up. So this is going to be adding white to white. So this is just going to be an add node. Then from our add node, we're going to subtract it. From our blacks and whites over here, this will be a subtract node. That looks pretty good. And then same thing we did before, I want to make sure that I know that this is the final output for this particular pattern. I have top output, that was a mistake. Blend node. I'm plugging this into the foreground, would just give us that output of this. Like I said, it's basically an extension. Um, it's not having any effects on our material. Okay, let's do this thing. First things first, subtract. Go into blend node, duplicate the shape node, and then add in a... Instead of doing that, let's just grab these two inputs here and duplicate these, or these two nodes at least. And then just throw this into here and set this to subtract. You can see it's already subtracting from there, which is cool. Let's view this as an output. And then grab our 2D transform, rotate this by about 90 degrees, and that was like a 180. And just drop this down. Oh yeah, that's another thing. This is on the same place as um, this over here, so in order to adjust that, let's just throw in a 2D transform just before this spiral node, or splatter circular, whatever. And then we can just 
shift this to the right or the left. We'll just position this to about there. It looks about right. And I start to block it off over here. And I want this to be a bit bigger. So let's go back to our node here and do 0 0.3. That looks good. And now we can start subtracting. Yeah, this is super tedious. This is actually sucky. What's going on over here? I don't know what that is. I wonder if that's... Something that could happen whenever you extend your tile beyond... Actually, let me grab another two transforms so I can demonstrate this a bit better. And how long are we going for here? This has been 37 minutes. It's going to be a lot longer than I anticipated. Okay. So something that could be very frustrating, and I wish I figured this out a lot sooner, but when you're dealing with a 2D transform and you bring it off screen, it's going to start tiling it. And in your parameters here, there's no way of dealing with this. Um, it's actually at the top here, which I never really looked at these outputs that much before recently. But if you look at your tiling mode over here, you can set this to absolute, and you can change this yourself. So from tiling horizontal and vertical, we can set this to no tiling, and it will remove that problem. Which is amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. Okay, anyway, that's just something I want to do to this Transform 2D here node. That we don't have, that's the wrong one. Uh, tiling, let's do absolute and no tiling. Maybe that fix our problem. Oh, do you see what's going on here? It's actually, we're subtracting something that's way too small. So let's increase this node here. And then, so that's the scale. And increase it a bit, make it a bit thicker. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's be our end result, and then go ahead and keep subtracting this. And that's that's much better already. Okay, so let's just match these over here. Also, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just to about there, I think looks pretty damn good. And then exact same thing, let's duplicate these. Let's throw in a blend node. Tracked, and maybe for future reference I should time lapse these because it's the same thing over and over. Let's view our final output. Let's grab this, rotate it about that much over here, and then just start crushing this down onto, onto here. Just trying to match this angle over here. So something around something around here looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks perfect. And then we just want to bring this out a bit. Perhaps to about there. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. Go ahead and duplicate these again. So in another blend node. Set this to subtract the exact same thing at the top. Let's view our final output. Maybe transform. Position this to the other side. Change this angle. And same thing again, we're just going to match the angle of the first leg we added here. That already looks pretty close, just a bit clockwise. And that was a bit too clockwise. It actually feels a lot slower than when I, when I was doing it without the recorder. It's weird that the recorder makes such a big difference there. Like my frames just feel a bit more sluggish. This is only 2K, I shouldn't struggle as much as, as it is. Okay, that looks cool. I think one more subtraction and we'll be Gucci. Let's add in a, another blend node. Set that on top and then set this to subtract. And then rotate this about there. Put this at the top. Let's do our output. And then drag this down until we more or less running off of this. So a bit less. Yeah, 
just to about there. So yeah, it doesn't look exactly like my reference, but as I said, the only thing that's going to get it there is a bit of time, and considering we're already 41 minutes into this first part, which should, which should have been the fastest part, I think I'm going to call it quits for now. I think that looks pretty good though. I'm very happy with that. This is still going to come out very nicely in our um, in our grayscale section. Let's bring these in a bit more. But yeah, that looks quite cool. So look at that. In only a very short <laughs> 42 minutes, we have created a very simple shape. But yeah, okay. From this point on, it's going to get a lot better. It's going to be a lot more um. Uh, just fun to mess around with it anyway. Alright, great. So I think that's it for the pattern creation. We've managed to keep everything neat, which is really saying something for me. Yeah, cool. So I guess we'll see you in the next uh, video. I was actually going to do like multiple videos per section, but instead I think it's better to actually just cram everything into one video. Because like I'm not going to run ad revenue on any of these videos, so there's no point in splitting it up really. Um, unless that's a good idea, I'm not sure if it is or not. I don't personally, I don't mind long videos, but maybe some people do. Okay, cool. So see you in the next part. All right. So before we start throwing things into our outputs, let's first add some more um, grayscale information. Well, actually, let's add grayscale information because so far we've just been working on our height. So. Let's see. Let's add some scratches and some of the major cracks and uh, dirt stuff for a start. So let's go ahead and just reposition my keyboard. Let's go ahead and search scratches. Scratches generator. Using the scratches generator, we're basically just going to throw some random scratches around our material here. So a couple of these parameters we want to adjust. I want these to be a lot bigger and also more straight, not so squiggly, because I want this to look like it was cracked instead of, you know, like um, like it was done organically or something. So let's go ahead and take down our spline number. So let's for now let's just do something like ten perhaps, and then we want to play with segments per line. I'm actually not 100% sure what this does, because if you play around with this, you don't see much of a change. I think the more of it changes when you're playing with this, this happens when you're dealing with bigger scaled lines. So yeah, I'm not sure about that just yet. Spline scale, we can turn this all the way up to about 0 .0 0 0.8. And then we want our scale random. One is okay. Spline distortion random. This is the one that's going to make it straight. So we want to turn this down to like, not 1, but... Something like 0 0.1. So we still have like this bit of a curve here. Also what we can do with this is go to our luminance random. And I want to change this a bit so we don't have too much um, color variation. 0 0.5 is okay. Fade length, we can also turn this down actually. Let's try 0 0.25. That looks cool. And then let's add some more splines actually. Let's do 12. I should keep it at 10, play with our seed. I want to have as little intersecting cracks as, ooh, that looks nice, as possible. Let's try this, but turn up our number to like 13. I wonder if we get like a random offset option here. Let's see if we can find something like that. A uh, rotation random, that might work. Yeah, that might be cool. They all seem to be going more or less in the same direction. So let's go ahead and... Go ahead and try... Try a different amount. 40 is way too much. Let's go back down to like 14. That's fine. Try a different random seed. That's quite cool. Let's increase the amount, 16, 20. Okay, I think we can make this work. Maybe just a little bit more, 24. Okay, I like that. <clears throat> so what we want to do with this is 
in order for it not to be appearing uniformly over you know over the material I don't want it to seem like as we go from shape to shape or rather as we go from this shape to this shape I don't want it to be continuing over this black um, area here I want it rather to be like a crack here and then different crack here different crack here I don't want it to continue so to do that we're going to be using um, let's firstly throw this down here for now then we're going to throw in um, a couple blend nodes, a 2D transform node, and then we're going to blend together our crack over the pattern we want. So for this, I'm actually just going to take two of the patterns. So I want to take the this outer one here. Grab the out Put that into the bottom duplicate this so it keeps that out it keeps our input from the scratches and then grab the next one in line that's not going to be this one that's going to be this one here and we want white on black so that's the input we want drop that in there then perhaps one more what we have here we have yeah, we need to just adjust this Okay, so we want to subtract white from black. Just slide through these and see which one works. Subtract here. Yeah. That's basically what we want. So let's set this to subtract as well. Then blend these together. Blend node. Doesn't matter which one's in the top. Not actually touching each other. Then oh, subtract did not work. Now add. Yeah. And then this one will be different from these two. And then perhaps we just want to do another blend node for this outside pattern. If you want to make it even more, you know, um, even more random or, you know, um, individual, we can take each output from here. I'm just going to show you how to do it with um, just a couple of them. And then if you want to go into that detail, you can, but I don't want to waste too much time. I really think this video is going to be hella long. Let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and grab this outside shape here. Drop this into the bottom background input, this one onto the top, set this to subtract. I actually wanted this to um, add. <coughs> so then blend node and throw this into there. Let's move these around, let's actually move this to the bottom. Then throw this at the top. Then just find the node that works. Cycling through this, none of these are actually working, so instead of doing this, let's go ahead and keep this on copy. Then let's invert this. Let's invert grayscale. Close that out. Change this back to add. And that's giving us what we want. So now, in order to actually keep these, actually, I'm being stupid. We still want the other ones, don't we? We do actually want the other ones. Okay, well, let's just. This properly. The blend node, let's grab the rest of our inputs. So we have this one over here, throw that into the bottom, and then this into the top. Then we're going to want one more. So, blend node, I'm going to grab this one over here, throw that into the bottom, to the background. Maybe we should just readjust these a bit. So, this is going to go to the top. This is, I don't know what this is. This is going to go to the bottom, this is the top, there, and then subtract the dots, so this is the correct order over here. That looks quite cool. Let's just connect all of these. Set this to add. Set this to add. That is add already. Probably this isn't doing what we want because we want to invert this. Grayscale. Set that to add. That gives us exactly what we want. Then 
finally at the end we just want to blend all of these together so this into the top the bottom set this to add and finally that's not gonna work this into here a bit neater shall we it's quite cool and this would be add as well that is add so that's cool so now you can see we actually still we have the exact problem we um I was talking about this isn't solving anything because they're just flowing onto each other. So to fix this, we're going to throw in a 2D transform node in these here. So let's go to 2D transform, 2D transform, 2D transform. And actually, what you want, what you can do, instead of um, doing 2D transform node, you can actually just um, have an individual scratches node for each of these. But I think that's a bit more. Of more work that we want right now, so let's just do this with the 2D transform. We can just rotate these and position these just in random directions. That's also going to solve the problem of everything being a bit directional. Let's see the output of this now. You can see that's random, that's exactly what we want. So, not completely also a benefit of having it all into what into the transform 2D instead of individual scratches. Now we can change the parameters of our scratches without affecting, you know, without having to go to each one of them and change them. So yeah, let's go back to our scratches and view the final result here. Go into this and then line number, if I feel like that's okay, I want to take the spine, spline width up to about... about there. It's cool. And then actually let's turn the amount of scratches down. Let's try 12. That does look quite cool. I just want to turn the scale up as well. Let's do scale of 1. Yeah, and then let's just try some random seeds and see what we come up with. We'll get too many scratches. Let's go 8. Let's go 5. Okay, now we have nothing going on in the middle. Oh, there you go. That looks kind of nice. So not like this crisscross thing we have here. That looks nice. That actually looks really cool. Yeah, perhaps we should keep this. Perhaps we should... Let's throw in six. Throw in eight. There we go. Okay, six was okay. We still want to change this more. We can revisit these nodes over here and get something we like. So we can definitely do this. If I keep um, tweaking stuff like this, this video is never going to finish. Because this is going to be long as it is. Okay, that's cool, I like that. Well, so once we have this, let's just think forward a bit. When we want to apply this over our material, we want it to be a multiply. So, these being black is fine. Okay, so for later, oh, this is not neat at all. That's better. So for later, what we want to do is we want to have a slope blur grayscale and I'll explain this in a second but let's just set this up for now let's put that over there let's add a frame around this this frame can be called this uh, frame can be called scratches that T frame actually no it's T name scratches and then let's change the color of this to something like red then we can just position these where we want but it's okay for there for now okay then let's make another uh so now we want to work on some dirt so let's go ahead and grab a dirt node what kind of nodes do we have actually let's try dirt 4 a yeah, dirt 4 looks quite cool 
but this isn't exactly what we're going for. So the good thing about Substance Designer is, you know, you can just play with these nodes until you get what you want, because there's just so much you can do. So with this, this is going to be our base, and then what we want to do with this is throw in a histogram scan. And this way, it's basically like a levels node, we're just going to isolate some of these uh, shapes we want, just with our position. And you can see that it really looks like some really cool dirt. We can change the contrast, so I'll change the contrast up to about 0 0.5. That looks awesome. Another thing that will be cool to do is by using one of these nodes down here, the slope blur, and I'm going to explain what this does in a second. This is honestly an amazing, amazing node. Apparently I can't use the search bar now. Because I suck. Throw this into... Why am I using a blend node? Not what I wanted to do. Let's throw this into the slope blur grayscale. And then I want to grab a moisture noise. This is nice because this is like really fine. But one thing I don't like so much is how this node comes out with this black patch over here. So to fix this, and I wish I found this a lot sooner, you can just change the random seed. I only found out about the random seed like a month ago or something. Been hell without it. Let's plug this into the slope of this node here. So we can change our samples to 32 and our intensity down all the way. And you can see what this starts to do. This is adding... It's almost like it turns everything into planes based on your slope. You know, your intensity, the lower it is, the more of the actual texture you're going to get. The higher it is, the more, uh, not exactly planular, but it just does cool things to it. So I want to find something that looks almost like it's um, stone. Then once we have that, we can throw in another histogram range. Um, I mean scan node, or range actually, no scan school. And using this, let's just find, let's just find our values. So somewhere like 0 0.5 is quite nice. Let's turn the contrast up. Basically what I want to do with this. And the higher we turn the contrast, we would have to revisit our position. It's fine, and then once we have these, see now these are very bright, hard sort of, cracks and damage here, which is actually looks really nice. But I still want to add some more of this um, some edge detail. Like it does have some, but it'll be nice to have some more. So let's just delete this for now. Let's throw in another slope blur grayscale. Using this slope blur grayscale, I want to put the same, actually this is a cloud. Let's use a cloud 3. And let's plug. The cloud 3 is a lot more um, fine detailed than the rest of them, so this is good for what we want to do here. Let's do the same thing. 32 samples and sensitivity 0 0.01. Ooh, that's nice. Maybe a bit too strong, so 0 0.05. So let's go before and after. That looks very nice. Okay. Let's just drop this down here for now. Neaten it up a bit. And then throw in a blend node. Let's throw this into the bottom, this into the top, and I like doing um, black and white operations, so I'm actually going to invert this over here and keep this close by to our blend node. Go here and then just do multiply. Okay, so that's going to come out quite nicely, but what I don't like is it isn't, there just isn't enough of it. So I do want to just change the scale of this. Let's just go back to our original node and change the scale to 0, I mean, uh, 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 3 quantum points, of course. Let's just go 2, let's just go 4. Okay, so 4 looks quite cool. I think that looks decent. Another thing we might want to do is actually change this back to 2, duplicate and then randomize it a bit. Let's just duplicate this. Let's go back to this node here, throw in a 2D transform, then just pull this out. Go out there, let's see what this gives us. It would help if we actually put it into the material. 
Uh, whites on whites, I think that would be a subtract. Was it? No, it wasn't. Add, yes, it was an add. This block was just there. So you can see we're joining these. These. This doesn't look. Um, I'm giving me the results I wanted. So I'm going to drag these up more. You know, I sort of want a directional sort of feeling from these ones. See how that looks. It actually looks more or less the same. Play with our contrast here. Let's go to the end result. Oh, it's getting lost in translation over here. Let's just play with our intensity. Let's take us down to 0 0.25. Go back here. And actually, instead of blurring this, let's go ahead and reconnect that and move this node over here and then connect it over here instead. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, that's doing what we want. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay, so this might be a bit too strong, but we'll fix that later if it is the case. Another thing I want to do, I want to change the intensity of these scratches over here, as well as give them some more texture as well. So let's go back to our scratches frame over here. Let's drag this out a bit. Let's throw in a histogram. Where do we throw that histogram in? Perhaps we should throw it... I'm thinking now. I'm having a thought. I don't know if it would be better to... Okay, let's throw this node in before, I mean after our scratches here. So let's go... Let's upload grayscale. Let's connect this into here. Let's grab clouds 3. Plug this in. Go to our samples. 32, intensity all the way down to 0 0.01. Below 0 0.02, 0 0.05. I'm sorry about that, I was interrupted by a phone call. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's see what this looks like on our end result. Uh, looks like nothing, why? Because we haven't connected it, you idiot. Okay, so we can just do a shift drag and then drop this into here if we don't want to reconnect everything. That looks cool but not strong enough. So let's add another um, histogram scan. Plug this into there. Let's extend this a bit. Out to about here. Histogram scan node will find our position. Which is quite high. And just increase the contrast. Shift click, drag, and drop. And that looks awesome. Perhaps a bit too big. So instead of playing with our counter, let's just go back, I mean our um, slope blur. Let's just go back to the, the width of the, of the scratches generator and change it down. Looks um, one maybe. Yeah, that looks nice. Maybe this here is a bit too on the nose. Let's move that. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that looks quite cool. I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at it with the combination without dirt. Okay, that looks quite nice. Okay, that's cool. Mm. Perhaps there's too much dirt now. So I think we need some more fine dirt, because we only have large details. 
But I mean, some of our noise maps will take care of that, so we should just leave this for now, perhaps. Let's go ahead and multiply on top of this. Well, not multiply, but just add on top of this. These other patterns over here. I'm not going to worry about doing the same procedure on this. I'm going to waste too much time. This should actually go into the top. And go into the bottom. And let's cycle through these until we get what we want. Yeah, that looks nice. That looks pretty cool. Let's grab these over here and create a frame. And we can name this frame Dirt. Okay, awesome. What's next? Wait, this doesn't look right. What am I doing wrong? And where am I doing it wrong? I'm not that sure where I'm doing it wrong. Am I doing something wrong? Yeah, this is missing. We have a circle missing. And we definitely have a circle missing. Where do we do this? Mm, this is connected, this is connected. Circle is this. This one here. What's happening with you, dude? Oh, this is copy. My bad. Let's change that back to subtract or add. And this should fix itself. And it does. Awesome. Okay. This is looking pretty good. I'm happy with this result so far. I think let's save our project here. And then go on to the next thing. Which would be... Because we'll take this and throw this through a... Warp now, just so it doesn't look so uh, uniform circles everywhere. Then let's grab a Perlin noise. With this Perlin noise, let's set this to something like 8 or 4, 6. Plug this into the, what is that even called? Gradient input. Then that, of course, is way too intense. So let's do not really sense it. Let's try 0 0.25. Maybe that, but maybe this is a bit too small. Let's try 10 and then turn it down. 0 0.15, 0 0.1, 0 0.05. So before and after, not much of a difference. Actually, if anything, it seems more circular to me. But I can never draw circles worth the damn, so maybe that's why. Let's try to take the scale down by 8. So here's 0 0.1. You know, whenever you're making something that's, I suppose not man-made, but something that's supposed to have been degraded over time, or it's always nice to add to, to make sure it just doesn't look uniform. It really increases the believability. I think that looks quite good. Okay, so before we continue, I'm just going to have a quick water break, and then I'll be back. And we're back. Okay, so let's separate these outputs a bit, just so we have some room, room to work with. And then we can go ahead, I think the next step would be, like we've done with these scratches, it would be nice to add some more uh, damage on these sides here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to grab a... Slope blur grayscale again. Then we're going to connect the output of this node into the top. Then in the bottom node, we're going to use the same dirt we used last time, which I believe was dirt 4. Yes, it was. Then, same thing as last time, just gra grab a histogram scan. We'll plug this into there. Then, just scan to find something we like. So I do want this more. Uh, to be a bit more uniform because you don't have isolated areas of damage. You want it to be pretty universal. Actually, let's add both. Let's add some more areas which are more damaged and some areas which are less damaged. But to do that, let's keep this at about what was it? Um, 0 point, um, 0 0.1, 0 0.25. Then let's increase this contrast. And then we'll blend this on top of clouds. 
Actually, instead of blend it, let's produce these both individually. And then, 32, let's do, I'm doing this wrong, aren't I? Am I? We want to isolate the edges. Let's try using edge detect, uh, detect. I actually, for some reason, don't remember how I did this last time, but it's relatively simple with an edge detect node. Let's change ed edge detect to about 0. Point, um, Oh, that's edge roundness. Take down the roundness to something like, well, nothing actually. And then width, want this to be quite small, 0 0.01, 0 0.05. Doesn't seem to be having much of an effect. So let's just work with this. Actually, I want this to be a little bit thicker. And perhaps before we do this, maybe we should First, bevel the edges, because if you plug it in like this, it's going to look very straight. I want these edges to be a bit beveled, so let's go ahead and add in a blur node. That's a blend node. Um, blur high quality, and this high quality node, we want to set this to quality of 1, intensity of something like 1 for now. And I want this to have a different amount of bevel than this. Actually, let's not waste time, let's just do the same amount of bevel, but... At least if you can see how I do the one, you can do the other yourself. Changing intensity is fine. Let's add in a histogram scan. And change the position until we see our edges quite clearly. So let's try 0 0.45 and increase the contrast. Yeah, this flow is a bit too strong. Let's do 0 0.5. Do 0 0.25. That's quite cool. Decrease the contrast again. Play with our position. Yeah, that's nice. Actually, perhaps what we should do... We're going to multiply this on top of that. Am I right? I think I am right. But I actually don't want the black here if we're going to multiply this. So let's just remove this black values. Uh, we can do that. So let's just add another blend node here. Okay, so actually looking back here, I realized I missed something. Um, the end result here, we just want the scratches because essentially what we want to do is... Uh, um, multiply these scratches onto the final one. Same with the dirt here. So what we can do here is just throw in another blend node. Slide this on over. Drop this down there. Then go back to these... Uh, our pattern over here and drop this into the top input. Then just set this to add and that should get rid of the circles it does. Let me just left the scratches. So what that looks like it's perfect. Then we'll multiply this over onto the white later. Okay, so this is our warp node. That's all good and dandy. I think the next thing we want to do is basically add a bit of. Um, okay, first, yeah, let's add some bevel to the end result of our shape over here. Let's go ahead and add in a blend node, a blur high quality grayscale and a histogram scan and plug this into here and originally in my um, final result what I did was I gave a different amount of um, bevel to this than I did these so for the sake of time let's just um, do the same amount for now then blur this with a quality of 1 about 0 0.5 grab our histogram scan set the position of this up about there, perhaps, just until we have enough bevel where it looks a bit smoother. We can plug this into the background here and slide this to all the way down here. Make these look a little neater. So 
and plug this into the top. And what I want to do is actually perhaps invert this one, invert grayscale. Then here we can multiply this. Then we have this quite cool result going on over here. Okay, so what I want to do then is, you know we have these scratches and everything that look a bit alike, you know, almost like they would if they were scratched from the same material or something. So I want to do the exact same thing to all the edges over here. So let's grab another slope blur. We should probably hurry this up because I can't even imagine how long this video is going on for. Plug this into the top input and then throw in another um, Dirt 4 and Cloud 3 and then Slopler Grayscale into here like this play with this until we get what we want 0 0.1 and plug that in, that'll be helpful 0 0.01 grab our histogram again the scan histogram position up quite high this time and then just play with our contrast until we have these nice harsh shapes going on and then with this we're going to rough those or just um, make it a bit more uh, planular and then finally let's grab another blend node Then with this blend node, what we can do is put this at the bottom and then another slope blur grayscale. Put this into the top, plug it in here, and then let's get, um, actually perhaps let's use another one of these. Plug this into the top, set the scale at 2. Another histogram scan. Set the position of this also quite high. Contrast up to let's say 0 0.8. Position higher, 0 0.5. Play with these until we get what we want. Plug clouds into here as well. 32 intensity, 0 0.1. 0 0.01, 0 0.05, that looks pretty good. And then blend these together on add. Now we have a nice amount of um, variation in intensities. Perhaps not enough. Pick up blend node and turn on the opacity to 0 0.8, 0 0.5. Yeah, that looks nice. What we'll do with this is grab a edge detect node and we want to detect the edges from our beveled circle here plug this into there or perhaps not yeah actually this will work nicely it's uh, edge roundness down to zero edge width down to one can we go lower 0 0.05 we can't go lower but that's fine then we're going to throw this into a blur high quality as well. Quality of 1, intensity, we'll do something like 1 and then throw this into a histogram scan with a position of about there and then we'll blur this again. Basically what this is, histogram scan allows to just adjust the, the reach of our edge damage. Then just blur that a bit out. We'll probably adjust these later. The non syncing is that even necessary? It makes them a bit thicker, so that's fine. Let's throw in a blend node. We'll throw this into the bottom, this into the top, and just get an add going. Or perhaps subtract. No, add's fine. And perhaps with this final result, what we can do is add another layer of slope blur or not. Let's see what this looks like on the result. So um throw this back again. We have another blend node. This blend node will add the output of this. 
It was a bit neater. You know, multiply this on top. Yeah, that looks really awesome, actually. But yeah, it's way too, the reach is going way too far, so let's go back to the... Let's actually get rid of this blur. See what this leaves us with. That leaves us with something quite cool. I don't like the fact that you can see what we're doing over here. Maybe that'll look cool. Maybe we should leave this for now and then see what it looks like in the end result. Another thing we should do... Yeah, perhaps not. Let's increase the position a bit. And then throw in a... just contrast. Then I want this to be less affected as we the further we go, so perhaps we should throw back that blur node to the end result. Get this up to one intensity down until we're happy with it. And basically, just change the opacity here so it's not as strong. Okay, that looks pretty cool for now. Another thing I want is this is only affecting the white, I want it to affect the black as well. In order to do this, what we need to do is, let's do it back here already. Let's throw in a histogram, what is this? The slope blur. Why do we have a slope blur here? You know, it work quite well actually. That's why I put the slope blur here. Instead of blending this on top, let's throw this into the slope blur. So what we'll do here is grab this input. Grab our edge detect. Throw this into the top. This into the bottom. 32. Drop this all the way down. And then to 0. Point. 0 0.5, 0 0.01, 0 0.005, 0 0.01. Because that doesn't look as cool, but that can work, but I think we're really committed to the other method of doing it, so let's just keep that for now. Should be good. Now in order to make this look a bit better, what I'm going to do is throw in a histogram range over here. That looks cool. That looks much better. What the histogram range note does is it's basically going to take our dark fade and its lightest value, and with the parameters it's already in by default at 0 0.5, basically it's going to find a midpoint for everything. We can play with that if we want, but for now I'm going to leave it like that. That looks cool. Okay, awesome. The next step is to add a uniform like noise on top of everything for the surface detail. I forgot which note I used in my original one for the surface detail, but we can just find something. Perhaps just a... Let's type noise and see what we got here. Let's do it in black and white spots. Same thing here. It doesn't come out it's always the greatest. We can play with our random seed and two looks nice. That's very uniform. So let's actually grab that one. And throw down a blend node. Put this on top, this in the bottom. Then just change this to multiply. Or maybe not multiply, maybe something like overlay. Overlay is going to work very nicely. Let's do overlay. I just want to change the scale to maybe 2 or 3. And then just increase, decrease the opacity. So 0 0.5. That looks quite cool. 0 0.8. Okay, so we're coming up on the part now where we should start plugging it in to see the result. But to do that, I'm not going to plug it in straight away. I'm going to use something that we can use to preview everything for, with, firstly. But I think let's just take a small break, save our project, and get a drink of water, and then we'll continue. Okay, so when we plug these in, what we want, like I said, we're going to do something where it's just going to show some of the like a preview thing. So in order to do this, I'm going to throw in a normal node. And with this normal node, I'll go ahead right now and change that to 5, and then a um, 
Something called the Curvature Smooth, which is one of my favorite notes actually. We'll plug this into the Curvature Smooth, then the Curvature Smooth into the base color. We'll throw this bad boy, our end result of our grayscale, into there. And you can sort of see what this is doing if I quickly swap between our um, grayscale and then Curvature Smooth. So it does add this sort of shading, which is quite nice. And if yours has weird shading effects, like if I go ahead and change this to OpenGL, you just change it to DirectX and you should be good to go. Make sure you change it here as well. Alright, so with that done, let's throw this also into the roughness. And I'm not going to be using metallic for now. And we'll also throw the output of our pattern. Actually, perhaps the output of the bevel pattern, which was over here. Actually, that's not it. It's over here. Yeah. The output of this into the height over here. So in the levels node, so we can control the height. Um, and just position this, make it a bit more neat. Try work neat, but it always falls apart. So we don't actually we're not actually getting any height information at the moment. And actually, our roughness is the wrong way around. I wonder if we should change that. Yeah, let's just throw an invert over here. Invert grayscale. And now it's the right way around, so that's cool. Position that over there. Okay, what was I saying? Um, we don't have any height information at the moment, because so we actually need to just turn it on. So let's go to our material option over here. Go to material def definitions and then over here I'm just going to select tessellation because tessellation is the method of height we'll be using. The factor is the amount our, our cube or our shape is going to be um, divided into. So I'm going to go ahead, well divide isn't the right word because this is triangles, but um, you know, just going to add more, more polys to this. In scale we can just turn this up to something like 0 0.25. You can see we already have this sort of lifting up effect which is awesome. So We'll keep it there for now, so, and you, if you just play around with the fact that you can sort of see it working, the lower we get, the less geometry we have, the higher, the more geometry. But it's pointless anything over 34 at the moment, so we'll keep it there. Actually 32, yeah. Okay, so with that plugged in, this is looking quite good, I'm happy with this. I do think, however, this is a little bit too strong, so let's turn this down to like 0 0.5, because I want this to be a subtle sort of thing going on, so let's do 0.35, that looks a lot better, and then we also want to take this normal here and put it into our normal map, and that brings everything out a lot more, that's actually looking pretty awesome, now that looks nice, over here when you have these um, stretching over here, that's just because of course the software doesn't know what's behind straight lines, because we have no gradient here, so the sharp like white dark, and more white black. So if we want to fix that, we can add some more bevel, but I'm not terribly concerned about that because it doesn't look too bad. But this is looking actually really nice so far. So let's just keep going at it and see the end result. It's actually looking a bit metallic. So we can fix that, but well, let's see if we can go ahead and just change. We do have this metallic on black here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and change the scale of this node over here to 4. I think it's not going to make much of an effect from here on out. Yeah, 5, that looks okay. And then from there, I think we can add some more damage and grunge if we want. Let's actually do that. Let's throw in a... Um, grunge node, and the one I used for the previous project, which worked quite well, I believe was number 12. Let's throw that in, see what that looks like. Yeah, this is the one. So I do, however, want to turn down the... No, it wasn't 12, I'm lying. What was it? Was it grunge... 6, perhaps? It was directional, so it did almost look like there was things dripping off or scraping off. That's not it. Let's try again. And I mean, you can play with any of these. Any of these will work pretty well. I just want the one I used last time. I think it might have been five. 
Nope. Uh, two. Yeah, two's the one. Okay, so just delete these other ones we're not going to use. Then with this grunge map, it's a bit too contrasty, so we can turn down the contrast to something like 0.1. That looks okay. Now with our random seed again, always play with your random seed. You might f just find something you really enjoy. And then just try and make sense of what we got going on here real quick. Pull these back some more. Just do another blend node. Then from this blend node, we'll plug this into the bottom and this into the top. Then just change this blending mode to multiply. And of course, this is way too strong. And before we actually start adjusting this, just throw in a histogram scan. And then just find a position where we have a nice amount of grunge. And the contrast up. Looks quite cool. Then what we can also do with this actually. Let's turn the contrast until we just have these um completely white areas and then find something where it looks cool. Then what I want to do with this is throw in a blur high quality grayscale. And just something very low like 0 0.0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, it's cool. And then another Low blow grayscale, and then perhaps um, clouds three or actually moisture perhaps. Let's plug this into the bottom. Changes to thirty two. But if we can, we should play with those and see what those gives us as well. And just drop this down to something like zero point zero one. Way too low. Zero point zero two. Zero point zero three. I think moisture is working. Let's try black and white spots three. Plug this into the bottom. Delete that. I think this will work a bit better for us. Let's try these. Oh, there you go. Min looks actually pretty awesome. And then from here, we'll add another. Uh, what else do you want to add? Like the grayscale and clouds three, plug that in there, and just to 32 intensity 0 0.01. Quite cool. Then let's see what the end result of this looks like. Plugged in, of course. Throw that into top input. Why is that going in there? I'm so confused. Oh, that's that. Still need to add our blend node to here. I thought we already did. Plug this into the top. Set this to multiply. Oh, why isn't this working? We have this output going into the bottom. Oh, this is the wrong one. This is going to be an add in that case. Then with this add node, I actually want to invert this. And set it to multiply. Uh, multiply looks cool. Only thing is, oh, we did. I put it up here. Okay, let's just cut this away. Delete that, and there we have it. And then change the opacity to something like zero point uh, zero point one. Five. Let's plug this in and see what this looks like. Oh, it isn't. Okay, that looks cool. I think it's maybe a bit too strong. And we could also use some variants so you know it's not um, falling on top of each other. But you know how to do that. I've demonstrated it. So for now, I think I'm going to keep that. What I also want to do is throw in another histogram range node. Just get some more evenness going on here. And then also drop this all the way down to something like 0 0.35. Even more, 0 0.15. There's just very subtle effects. That looks quite cool. Yeah, that's nice. I feel like we can use more grunge though. Let's get something a bit more. 
Um, let me see. Let's throw in black and white spots. Three. Let's throw another blend node in before there. Blend node. Throw this on top and set it to multiply. And then let's just use a good old fashioned uh, levels node. And let's clamp down on some of these dark values. So let's grab this down here. A random seed, not of that, of this. Something like that. Change this opacity far down. Just so it's standing out from what we already have. That's something around. Get a little bit higher. Two, five. Yeah, that looks cool. That was quite nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think this is okay for our grayscale for now. There's a lot I want to do on this store. There's so many things we can do. Like on my other um, video, what I did, I added like some grunge falling off these interior parts, which looked really awesome. But for now, I think we're running out of time. So let's just get the grayscale thing going. I mean, the gradient, the color overlay. And then just call it quits there. Because this is going on for quite a while now. Let's just go have a frame node. Just name this uh, grayscale and we'll give this a nice green color. Oops, down there, dirt can also be a cool color. Let's make it make it purple. Alright, that looks okay. Next step, of course, would be to throw in let's throw in some blend nodes so we can start separating out some of these. But now I'm just going to use a blend node as a sort of a um, like a pass node, or just like a connector. So we've put it in the top, it's going to pass through and it's not going to affect the actual input. Exactly what we want, because we just want these to be closer to where we're going to work. And we'll grab this one, put this in the top. Then we're going to grab another couple of these actually. And this one will be here, and this one will be here, and then last but not least, this one will be here. And let's drag these up to where we're going to be working. Because so we have the outer shape, which I want to invert real quick. So grayscale. So that we're working on the same um, color colors, so we're going to be applying over the white, so over here as well, that looks good, that looks good, and that looks perfect. Okay, cool. So from here, what I want to do is throw in another blend node, another couple blend nodes. Enough to match what we already have, as well as some uniform color nodes, which we can just put above them, so we might want to separate these out a bit. I get it, this video will be a lot quicker if I didn't faff around like this, but eh, whatever. YouTube doesn't have a, a size limit. Then we'll throw this into the factor, this into the factor, this, and there's much quicker ways, to, ways of doing this. I could have added everything and then copied it, but anyway. And then this into the factor, this into the top value, and then that should be black, but it's not black. Oh, you know what? We might have to add another uniform color here so we don't have this. Yeah, we do. That sucks. Maybe two per one. Actually, let's just use the same black color. There's no point in adding all these different ones. Let's just put one uniform one. Just throw it onto everything. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with some um, color now, we have alpha to worry about. That's fine. 
go there into there, to the into there, just like that. In. Okay, so these of course are going to be the colors of our rings. So we can go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to pull up my reference so that we know. Just so that we know. Um, Let's see if I can remember where I put it. So we don't see battle with colors, so we can just do the, use the color swatch over here. So I'm just, just got this over here, and we'll go ahead and pick the correct colors we want. So for our first color, which is going to be our outer color, it's going to be this brownish color here, and it's going to be more or less the same for the the inner one. So let's grab the inner circle, get that color. This is going to be the blue color. And we can adjust these later if we want. This will be the red. What is this? Oh, this is this over here. Actually, this is the same color as these patterns here, so we actually need another... Another, um... No, this side. So let's separate these over here. This is the one, this is the one. Add in another blend mode. And one of these are the same inputs, so we can just copy it and drop this into the vector. And we'll delete this grayscale here afterwards. So we'll go ahead and grab our pattern, which is this here. Throw this into the top input, so it just passes through. We can delete that now and throw that into the alpha or the mask or whatever you want to call it and then we want this to be the same color the last time we want this to be the same color as this actually instead of having another one let's just blend these no reason to do that and yeah I understand why the video is so long I'm not doing this very um quick like Okay, now we should be good. We've got this going, and we have everything else going all right. Okay, so now we're going to blend these all together. So we can just go ahead and plug these in, plug these in, and then set this to add, I think. Yes. Gain, blend node. Grab these two. I don't work with color as much as I work with uh, grayscale, so. This is very much trial and error for me a lot of the time. Another blend node. The top into the bottom. Set this to add. And one final one. Put that in there. Put this in here. Set that to add. Okay, great. Now we have this. Let's just neaten this up a little bit. Everything looks skew. I don't know why. I think I've been staring at this for too long. Good enough for now. Okay, now what we want to do is actually drag all of these forward because we want to be using the output from our. I don't know if we should just see how it's adding another one. Let's add another normal node. Set this to 5 as well because we would just want to take. We're going to duplicate our curvature over here. So, curvature smooth. And then we want to drag this over here. So we're going to blend node. Throw this into the bottom. This into the top. Then change this to a gradient. Which is basically just going to mean that it's going to turn it into a, a color node, even though it's just grayscale. And then set this to overlay. That's going to add a lot of these this dirt. Actually, overlay or multiply, I think multiply would work a bit better. It does work a lot better. You can just change this. Maybe it doesn't. The thing is, overlay is giving us a lot of... Actually, we'll just adjust our colors at the end. Yeah. Let's keep it on overlay for now. This is looking pretty good. I think. This is very black. And it's very black. So we can change that later, that's fine. It's actually extremely black. Because we haven't actually given that a color yet. 
It will do that. We'll just plug that in at the end. Okay. We actually don't even have our ambient seclusion on, but we'll do that later. So I think the next thing we can do is much like... The thing that's not cool about this, let's actually plug this into the base color so I can tell you what I'm talking about. It cuts off very sharply, so I want this to almost look like it was cutting off a bit smoother. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's go and do a slope below grayscale. Um, sorry, slope below grayscale color. So actually just slope blur. Slope blur node. And then we'll just go hunt for uh, what we were using last time for the scratches. And I don't remember. That was that dirt, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. That was that. Where was that? That was that grayscale. That was just over here. So we're just going to throw this into there. So let's just select it with one click so we can navigate up there. Plug this into the bottom. See what this looks like if we change this. I'll plug it into the wrong one, you idiot. Plug it in there, change the samples to 32. Intensity all the way down to 0 0.05, 0 0.08. Let's do 0 0.05 for now. And then let's actually throw in our ambient exclusion. So ambient exclusion isn't added by default, so we're going to have to create it ourselves. So we'll add an output node, add a usage. This will just be ambient exclusion. We can name it over here. Let's just do AO for now. None of these fields actually do anything, it's just for our own reference. We'll throw that in over there. And then we need an ambient occlusion node in order to plug our grayscale into. So let's throw that in there. And throw this into the ambient occlusion. In order for this to actually take a place in our 3D view, we need to tell it that this is ambient occlusion. View in 3D, ambient occlusion. That's going to be way too dark, so we want to go back to this node here and change the depth down to something like... And this will change it to 16 samples. Something like 0 0.05, or something like that works pretty well. We still need to play with our color a bit, because this is a little too saturated, I think. We'll do that in a second. And some color variants would be nice, but I think we're going to run out of time. What we can do here, let's go back to... Well, let's test which works better. Let's throw in the levels. Plug this in here. Then I just want to go auto level. And just make it a bit darker perhaps. Something like that looks pretty dope. So let's go and plug this into Oh come on. Plug this into the color node if we can never get there. See how that looks? That's really looking a million times better. Yeah, that looks cool. I think next what I want to do is add some color variation. So what I'll do here is throw in a blend node, throw in some clouds. Uh, let's throw in clouds three. So then there we want to grab a blur high quality grayscale, add a gradient over here to convert it. Then let's blur this by something like 1. Then we want to set the scale, but we'll do that later. For now, let's just set this to, I think, multiply. What does that look like? That looks good. Just a bit too strong. So let's do 0 0.5, 0 0.03. That looks like nothing. Point one, zero point two. Then we start seeing stuff. What we can do? Perhaps that's all right, actually. Let's try to throw in a levels here. And if we auto level this, let's see what this gives us. That's very bright. Let's see if we plug that into there. 
me take this away because it's messing that up. Plug this back. Please cooperate with me. That's a little too bright, actually. Actually, a lot bright. I like what we're getting at. So actually, instead of overlay, let's multiply this. And then auto levels this. Much better. Yeah, that's nice. I like that a lot. Okay, brilliant. This color isn't quite doing it for me. This um creamy color over there. So let's go back up to where we have that. And just resample this from my reference here. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, now let's get rid of this black here, and then I think we can almost call it quits. Stuff I would, stuff I would still do to this, and that can maybe homework or something, is adding some proper dust or uh, something like that. And actually, we also need to work on our um, roughness modify um, roughness output. Because at the moment we just have the curvature smoother going in there. Yeah, it figures. Just as I start recording something, everybody wants to talk to me. Nobody talks to me if I'm not recording. Anyway. Um, in order to do this, let's go ahead and throw something over here. Let's grab a blend node. Throw this into the... This into the top, then we'll grab a uniform color. Throw this into the bottom, and then for the factor, we're going to grab the output of... Something all the way down here. Make our way that side. Plug this into the factor. And then set this color to green. And I think we might just need to swap these two around. Yep, that looks perfect. And of course, we want this actually being green. So let's just sample something from my reference. It's so like a dark brown, looks pretty good. And then we'll plug this into the final result just by swapping that out there. Alright, that looks pretty good. So perhaps this normal is a little too strong. I'm getting quite a, a strong sense from that. So let's just duplicate this so we don't affect our overture smooth and changes to like two or even one. Maybe like 1.5. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's do this roughness. Right, do it again. Okay, so for the roughness, I think let's go ahead and throw in a levels node and then grab the output of the grayscale, which is over here. And let's go ahead and plug this in. Let's keep in mind that the more white it's going to be, the more uh, diffused it will be, and the more dark it is, the more of that, uh, <clears throat> the more of that shininess we're going to get. Let's go ahead and throw in a levels node. And with this levels node, I believe there was a way to invert the straight on your levels. Uh, values. Well, perhaps not. Unless we just swap these channels around. Let's just add an invert node instead. Invert grayscale. And this is sort of what we want. So we want black on the outside and then white on the inside. Okay, let's grab these and then replace this into the roughness. So we can delete that there. Throw this in there and delete that. That's really giving us, well, at least something better than we had before. But on top of this, actually, this looks okay. We can play with this levels to see if we can, um... Let's uh, auto levels. And then drag this up so we get some more matte going on. Uh, let's get a bit more shininess. Something around there. I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, but generally when you're working with PBR, you want it to be as realistic as possible. I think I went over this already. Or maybe not. So you want to look at reference as much as possible and imitate it as much as possible. That's the whole point of PBR. It's physically based rendering. But in terms of fan art for movies, 
problem with movies is usually when they want to create something like this, you know, I saw it in the um, behind the scenes of Lost. It nothing to do with all movies, but I'm assuming they do because it seems like a cheaper option. They'll just buy like foam, and then carve out the shapes they want in the foam, like high density foam, and then paint over it. And generally, it doesn't really give you realistic results. So when I was looking at reference for this, I couldn't quite tell, you know, what type of material it was. So let's just have fun with it. So we can pretty much do what we want with the levels. We're not studying any reference or anything. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's just make it a little more shiny because we're still going to be multiplying on an extra level over here. So let's drop this down here. Let's throw in a blend node as well as a maybe clouds, maybe dirt, maybe uh, yeah, clouds will be fine. Let's grab clouds too. This is a bit of a lighter cloud, which is quite nice. Focus into the top input, this into the bottom input. And if we want the area where the black is to be um well actually it doesn't matter because there's a pretty much an equal amount of black and white, so let's just plug this in and see what this gives us. Then we can play with the opacity until we get what we want. That drops it down quite a lot. So let's play with the opacity, let's try zero point five. That looks cool. Do zero point four five. Let's do zero point three five. That looks quite nice. That's just gonna break it up a little bit outside of you know what we have going on in our grayscale, which I do prefer because it does make it a bit um a bit more no, just visually interesting. Let's clamp down on these a bit. And that's looking quite cool. Let's just grab the overall levels node and bring down this black a bit. So to have fun with this. Yeah, it's much better for long reference because then you actually know what to do. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. I tried to export these videos in Premiere Pro, but for some reason, the um. The audio has gone out of sync, but it's not in the videos, only when I put it into Premiere, so I'm going to have to fix that somehow, I'm just not that sure how yet. I'll see if I can do that, and then I'll get these uploaded. But yeah, I hope you uh, learned something at least. I think for future videos, I'm not going to do a, sort of like a, uh, what do you call it, like a, a freestyle. Let's see where this takes us, because it takes a bit too long. I think we've been going on for quite a long time now. It must be at like two hours or something. But yeah, so yeah, maybe a bit more scripted in the future, but um, depending on the response of this, I do want to make more videos, not only on Substance, but like back to rendering in, um, you know, uh, ray tracing rendering engines like V-Ray, Corona, maybe even Cycles, I haven't used Blender in a long time. And just fun stuff like that. Some modeling, I'm really getting into some proper hard surface modeling. It's just so awesome the way that's just the way it works and you know, the end results are just really having fun with it. So, um, yeah, with that being said, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.